Well, I guess, I guess Poetry Slam is something that exists within the umbrella term of poetry, and then within that you have performance poetry, and which is um, poetry which is written with some kind of an intent to be performed at some stage. And then within that performance poetry category, you have slam poetry, which is competitive performance poetry. Poetry Slam is, is a competition between poets, put most simply. It uh, focuses on performance because obviously you're performing to a live audience. Uh, the audience is usually the judge, so, um, so you're, you're really trying to appeal to what they want to hear. It started as a backlash against the idea that poetry was just for the sort of literary elite, and it was people in the audience got to vote for their favourite, which meant poets started performing with the audience in mind. It's a competition, it's not very complicated, you come, you read some poems, people vote on them in one way or another. If you win, you win some cash, or people clap you on the back, or other people look at you and go, oh, your poetry is terrible, you just know the bartender, or something like that. Honestly, people would call it a competition, but I would mostly say that it's where you go to test out your material, see how an audience reacts to it, get judged, but more importantly, see how it affects other people. I think it's somewhere between a piece of bar entertainment and um, a poetic meeting of, 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 of really talented individuals who are trying to put their work out there for other people to see. Best description I've ever heard of a poetry slam is a rap battle but with cardigans. So I'm going to stick with that one. But yeah, it's essentially just competitive poetry. That's probably about as much as you can say about the format without skittering off into all kinds of deviations here, there and everywhere. But basically, yes, it's poetry being subjected to a form of gladiatorial combat. As I flick between my high hopes and my cynicism, I will strive for balance and optimism. In my mind, they're intertwined like the colors in a prism, but the light's too bright, it burns, blurs my vision. I shut off the visual and enter the surrealism where my dreams are stacked high with pre-planned precision. My inward visualized mind is opulent neoclassicism and is tailor made by me because I am the chief technician. I shuffle the foundations from original positions. I have wisdom and opinions and thoughts and new suspicions. I marry tradition with proper criticism. I got a scientific mind, I know based on empiricism. Tao, Buddha, Jesus Christ, yeah man, I pick and mix with my religion. I'm a scripture twisting little demon, far from heathen. I believe in the power of words to build or break a whole world. And I mean that literally because I believe language makes the earth twirl. Do I like poetry slams? Yes and no. I think they're a good way to get an audience that might not necessarily um, listen or read much poetry or spoken word, but I also don't like them. I feel like I feel like a, uh, I feel like slam poetry is a genre and art form of its own, and it can be quite upsetting to see someone who's done page poetry or poetry that doesn't work to manipulate an audience into laughing or clapping or clicking or put them in a state of shock. To see someone bear that part of their soul in a quieter way and it not be given the whoops because it hasn't manipulated the audience. I feel like they're almost quite polarising and I don't think I can be like lukewarm about them. Like there are some parts of Slam that I like adore and love and I think they're incredible and there's other parts which I'm like that just sucks. Certain styles of poetry may not be as suited to poetry slams and that way people who only go to poetry slams so that's their first exposure they think that's all that poetry is it's a certain style of slam poetry or spoken word poetry and there's just much more to it you do find yourself uh, seeing people kind of like fish for likes and fish for approval as opposed to being honest sometimes, which is a negative thing I've seen. People looking for that laugh, that joke, like a comedian, and they're treating it in a different way. There is a certain type of poem that works at a slam, um, and it's not what I write. So that's unfortunate, and I, I'm kind of put off events a little bit if, if, yeah, I guess I go to less slam events, because I think I'm not gonna be able to perform there. Let's put it this way, you're, you're at a slam. Two things, in my experience, win slams. Funny poems, or poems about how racism, sexism, inequality, capitalism are bad. And if you do something like that, you will score highly. Somebody turns up, it's their first time ever behind a mic and they've written a poem 
about a painting of their last duchess on the wall or a statue they saw in Egypt or something like that and they don't score highly. So either A, they'd never do it again. They go, oh that didn't work, I lost, I'm, I'm a loser and they quit writing or performing. Or they change their writing to something that is more like what wins. So they either go more funny or they go more political and saying the obvious things to a left-wing crowd. Um, and I think it, it has a tendency to homogenize that. My good friend Failure wrote to me today and said, Pitiful penniless poet, please. Paint your tongue blue with enough grape juice and sailor speak until your fingers uncurl from the wine glass. Return them to handshakes, applause, interlock fingers for lifting. Let these mudras remind how your hands have never been hollow. That you've never needed strangers to translate any trigonometry in your messy palm. Sit with your reflection. See the simmering shame of such a similar semblance shred crisis into something you can stitch to your chapped lips. Taste appeasement instead when you want a vineyard's worth of pity. Feel anger itch beneath your teeth. Let it bite the temple bricks to dust and bleed your broken molars back into the mortar. Build yourself into whatever it is you need first. A fireplace a church, a gravestone, or a stage. Just stop biting your cheeks in the hopes that your tongue might do something impressive. <laughs> I often feel that poetry slams don't do justice to the people who are in them. Very often you end up with three, four, or five people at the top of, of, of a poetry slam at the end of a night. And I'm thinking, you know, any one of those people should be a winner. But it's very difficult to have chosen between them because how do you compare between somebody who's doing a piece of really committed rap as against somebody who's doing a beautiful descriptive piece of somebody who's broken their heart and is, is you know really throwing themselves into that and somebody who's doing a humorous piece about how they like mozzarella and now you're trying to compare those things and it's like you're saying here's um, an orange an apple a grapefruit and please tell me which is the best tomato at the end of the day the best poet never wins them and that's kind of how, how I personally look at it. So it's mixed kind of feelings towards slams, really. I don't like the fact that poetry slams are seen as the only way that the poetry scene can, can, can grow and can involve more people. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's fairly skewed uh, towards poetry slams. They're, it's kind of, like a, uh, it's kind of like a really bad distillation of what poetry can be, because it serves a purpose, but it's not everything. I think it limits poetry. I think there's um, aspects of poetry people focus on in slams um, and certain styles will fall out of favour, certain topics will fall out of favour. Slams usually privilege pain and suffering and sadness and although I think it's really important that those things are expressed and that's what art is all about, is about giving a voice to like silence things, the things you wouldn't normally talk about. I think it also can breed a very negative space in which it's like but I, I've suffered more, so give me more points, and I don't think that's healthy in any way. To the strip club who told me to go away and tone up before they would hire me, I am sorry that my body positivity is too big for your stage, that I am wider than your poles, I am sorry. The thinking desire is multifaceted, not a pre-cut, pre-shaved, pre-pubescent mold. I am sorry for refusing to exist quietly, for not crossing my legs tightly on the tube. I am sorry for being a feminist in every single room. I like, they're cool, innit? I'm not, I'm not like against them, but I'm not like poetry slam champion advisor. Like, um, they're cool. I really enjoy them. Like, I think it's a good way to sort of test out your work and see uh, how an audience reacts. Like, you get a physical kind of ranking and score and stuff like that. It's really easy to see if a, a crowd likes a piece or doesn't like a piece. What I like is that it does uh, quantify poetry. Um, poets are really polite. And so you can perform a poem and they'll go, oh, it's amazing. And they'll all think it's awful. I appreciate an, uh, a sense of friendly competition. I like the, the sense of excitement that you get from knowing that um, you're going to be up before an audience and you're going to be judged on what you're doing, that there's going to be a sense of, uh, a sense of atmosphere, a sense of occasion, um, that just, yeah, it, you get attended by those things a bit more than you do in a standard open mic night. So yeah, it's, it's, 
it's good for charging up the performance, I think. The motive and the heart behind Poetry Slams is, is, is incredible. Uh, I think the things that have been realized through Poetry Slams is amazing. I think the problem is when people think that all poetry needs to be like Poetry Slams or that all poetry can't be like Poetry Slams. I think it exists in its own merit. They, they do often get a lot of stick around um, having a bit of a formula, but I think it's, it creates that sort of healthy competitiveness amongst poets. It challenges poets to write for different audiences. Like, it's, it's very easy to write for yourself and to write for an audience of poets, but if you know that your audience is, you know, people in the back room of a pub who have stumbled in, it's quite interesting to have to write for an audience that doesn't reflect you. It's great as a self-improvement tool, especially coming up. It teaches you to perform, teaches you to write to time limits, um, and to just kind of make your writing more efficient. Sometimes you can write a six-minute poem where you could have made it three minutes. I like slams in that you don't get in that, if you're not exposed to the scene, or you haven't performed your work before, you don't get in that echo chamber, echo chamber mindset where you're kind of there by yourself with a notebook or a laptop writing your poetry and thinking, yeah, this is lit, this is, this is, this is the shit. So I think from a performer point of view, what I learned from slamming was to uh, get on stage, make an impression straight away. And I think that's a really important performance skill. Also toughened up my skin because I've had pieces which have won a slam one week and the next week I'm bottom. And it's harsh, but then if you're going to do anything creative on the stage, that's harsh. So you may as well start learning it early on. But poetry slams force people to say what they like. Um, I don't think poetry that scores low at slams is necessarily bad, but it does force people to interact with poetry at a very, uh, a very exact level. There's too many vegan poets! <laughs> there are too many vegetarian options on a Nando's menu, and there are too many healthy options on a McDonald's menu. There are too many types of beer, and there are too many types of wine, and there are too many types of alcohol, and there are too many nights where I've been addicted to alcohol. There are too many nights my friends have been addicted to alcohol, and there are too many of my friends who are addicted to alcohol, and there are too many people we can no longer mention, and there are too many nights we can no longer mention, and there are too many vegan poets, and there are too many comic book stories. There are too many Batman stories, and too many Superman stories, and there are too many Spider-Man stories, and there are too many Spider-Man films, for that matter. <laughs> and there's also too many Spider-Man origin films, to further that matter. Oh, 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 there's also too many white people in Egyptian films. <laughs> Most of the poetry slams that I've been to, I really like the sort of atmosphere that they had. I'm quite intimidated by them, which is a different thing, but I still like them all the same. I think it's something that's very different from the poetry I often do. But yeah, I mean, I enjoy it for what it is. I enjoy watching it and um, hearing the poetry more than actually taking part in it, I think. I love going to poetry slams. I think they're a lot of fun. They're a really good way to get people who aren't normally into poetry to come along to them because people will watch anything if there's that kind of competitive element. It's very like Great British Bake Off. People who don't like baking will watch it because there's that competition in it and people want to see people get eliminated. They want to pick a favourite and root for them to the final. I think it's quite nice for people to take poetry seriously as an art form and I think kind of having that kind of competitive element kind of does for some people and I think it, it, it makes it perhaps more of a, not more watchable, more spectator sport perhaps. I mean, I think that they serve a really important function. Um, I think for me, because I've been doing spoken word for about four years now, and when I first got involved, I was super into slamming. I entered every slam that I could because it was a way, and I think most simply it was a way to get validation, especially when you're an emerging artist, you're like, oh, they clapped for me. Oh, I came in second. Yes, I'm doing something right. As it spans out, as I see it in London, because that's my frame of reference, Poetry slams are a way to advertise one's talent to get uh, booked and to feature, which means you get to read like four poems. So if you're getting where I'm coming from, you get to read three poems, and if you win, you get to go somewhere else and read po four poems. I didn't really start with slam. I started with open micing, but uh, when I started getting momentum and really like getting uh, more exposure to my poetry, more gigs and more paid gigs, it was because of slams, largely and they've kind of helped me find homes and places that I wouldn't have 
from a magazine. It takes a long time for a poet who's doing them to realise that they're so much dependent on you winning. Um, whether the judges had a really bad day that day or whether you, you know, slip up a single word, you can kind of determine your whole worth as a poet by a slam, when actually it's dependent on so many tiny things, it's a really, really hard thing to judge. And the idea of having a poetry slam competition is quite bizarre. If you take slams too seriously, it's very easy to go, oh, well, I haven't won a slam out of all the ones I've entered, so I'm a bad poet. And that's never true. And I think people that go to, to a few slams begin to realize that the, the structure, the format, the competition is there. It's not, I feel like a gimmick underplays it too much, but it's there as a construct that enables a lot more to happen. Uh, and I think if you place too much importance on, on the individual structure, you lose what the initial intention was behind it. Slam is such a wonderful and accessible way to get people into the scene. So it's kind of that, that foot in the door almost, right? So you can get anyone to come to a slam, but it's hard to get people to come to an open mic night if you say it's a spoken word, open mic night. It's like, oh, I'm not really into spoken word. And the second you say, oh, I'm hosting a slam, they're like, yeah, let's go to a slam. We can kid ourselves that it's like, oh, this amazing thing. It's just an organized open mic with a little bit of extra buzz. And um, so what I like about the one in Oxford is maybe because I'm a little bit older than many people who do, who um, put on slams, but our age range in Oxford actually goes from 18 through to, we have slammers in their 70s. And I love that, that, that people feel, still feel brave enough to come up and perform. I think, I'm go I think I'm going to enjoy them, I just don't at the moment. <laughs> Alright, so we need to do some scene setting. It is 7.15pm. I am at a tram stop bus station in Edinburgh. It is raining. I am wearing shorts. I am also wearing sandals. And a day glow orange rain mac. I look like a twat. <laughs> And at this point in my life, I am 20 years old and I've never been out of my depth before. And I'm six foot four, I could touch the floor of the deep end. But this weekend has not gone great. We started as lovers, ended as mates, that was fine, that was great. We talked and debated, we're calm, you were late for a bus and you said there was one more thing you needed to say. Smash cut, back to October. I am off my face on two ciders <laughs> and I am dressed like the silver surfer because I am an alternative hipster. <laughs> That's when I first saw her. She is Sandy from the end of Greece and that final song does things to me. We are in my mate's kitchen and it is getting hot in here is playing. We know the words. It's getting hot in here so take off all your clothes and I say Yes, please. And she grins at me. Fast forward to Easter. We're cold up on the sofa eating our body weight in chocolate and I just want to hold her and that's when we first say it. You know the words. The ones that build or break your world and everything after just seems like a blur. I'm laughing, she's laughing, you're there for some reason. Everything is great. Not one moment of this feels like a lie. Then we get to July and I'm going through stuff. I won't go in depth, but we've both had enough and we still haven't argued, but boy, it's been tough. Our relationship is covered in rust. It's a nautical joke. <laughs> and so we break up. This weekend has not been great. Started as lovers, ended as mates. That was fine. You were late for a bus and you said there was one more thing you needed to say. So I waited. And waited. And the weight of those words turned my world into grey. Would have sunk me in earth through the tarmac and dirt of this tram station curb. Now words are just words, I'm not murdered to hear them. It just sucks to hear someone you love say that they are not certain for 21 months what they felt was love. Then she got on a bus and I haven't seen her. She was there and then gone like a holiday fever. She left me in pieces, a jigsaw I did not have the picture for anymore. And I haven't cried since my grandfather died, but behind these closed doors I have rained and I poured with weather in my head like a tsunami thunderstorm. I am so glad I met her. I would not be the person that I am today, because even though she ruined everything, she did it in the nicest way. <laughs> I would not change a single day, and I'm okay, I am okay. And I hope you are too. Because even if you never did, darling, I love you.
Thanks. Oh.